The iPhone SE is truly a one-of-a-kind product. It's basically a really outdated design, uh, but with a modern chip. We're currently at the third generation of the SE, which came out last March, and we've had a ton of rumors regarding the next generation SE, the SE4. In fact, it turns out that Apple will be changing uh, almost everything about it. Which raises two questions. One, uh, why change everything all of a sudden? And two, in what way? But before answering these questions, we have Dreamy Tech to thank for sponsoring today's video. They are the leading provider of smart cleaning vacuuming solutions to help keep you on top of all of your cleaning needs. Okay, so now let's talk about that why. The original SE launched in 2016, and it was essentially an iPhone 5S design, but with iPhone 6S specs. So it was a three-year-old design, but with current specs. The second gen SE launched in 2020, and it was an iPhone 8 design, but with iPhone 11 specs. So again, a three-year-old design, but with current specs. But the odd one is the iPhone SE 3, as this one launched in 2022 with an iPhone 8 design and iPhone 13 specs. So a five-year-old design, significantly outdated, but also with current specs. So this really old design is 100% going to be updated with the SE4. This is, of course, the main reason for Apple changing everything, as a new design will inevitably change a lot of the features as well. But this is not the only reason. You see, back in April of 2022, reports were claiming that the SE3 was selling very poorly with Apple even cutting production by a whopping 20%. In fact, Michiko said in December of 2022 that Apple was considering canceling or postponing the SE4 due to consistently lower than expected shipments of mid-range to low-end iPhones like the iPhone 13 mini, the iPhone 14 plus, and the iPhone SE 3. And I quote, a full-screen design of the SE 4 will increase the manufacturing costs slash selling prices. As a result, Apple will need to reconsider the product positioning and return on investment for the SE 4. They will need to reconsider the product positioning and return on investment. That's a very interesting way to put it. So it is pretty clear that the SE4 will be something completely different, which raises that second question, in what way? Well, John Prosser said in August of 2022 that the iPhone SE4, from what he's heard, would actually look the same as the iPhone XR, which does make a lot of sense from a manufacturing standpoint. You have an old design as well that uses an LCD panel, a single camera module on the back, uh, of course, much cheaper to manufacture compared to a more modern design. The only problem is that the XR came out in 2018. So if Apple launched the SE4 today, uh, it would already be a five-year-old design. Apple doesn't update the iPhone SE every year, so this design would get outdated extremely quickly, even faster than uh, the old one. Now, Michiko has actually said recently, at the end of February, that Apple has now restarted the iPhone SE4 development, so it's not canceled anymore, and that it would be using a 6.1-inch OLED display supplied by Bowie. On top of that, it would also be using an Apple-designed 5G chip. Now, this is very interesting, especially the OLED mention, and that's because the iPhone XR did not have an OLED panel. It only came with an LCD display. So OLED automatically means that the design would be newer than the XR. Michiko actually tweeted recently that the SE4 would actually have an iPhone 14 design. Now, that is an unexpected turn of events. Not only that, but according to Ming Chico, the mass production would begin in the first half of 2024, which goes against other rumors that the SE4 had been delayed until 2025. Now, this design choice does actually make a lot of sense when you think about it. The iPhone 15 is said to come with a more rounded frame, so this would be the first frame redesign since the iPhone 12. And in that case, the iPhone SE 4, which is likely to launch in March 2024 at the earliest, would then match the previous design style that Apple had used on iPhones, such as the iPhone 12s, the iPhone 13s, and the iPhone 14s. Also, remember that the iPhone 15, the regular model, will also be dropping the notch, meaning that the SE 4 will then be the only new iPhone to still come with a notch, making it look more inferior to the more expensive models. So, yeah, this does make sense. But it is pretty safe to assume that a more modern design with an OLED display Face ID, MagSafe, all of this would increase the price considerably. But before we talk about the pricing, I want to tell you guys about probably the most awesome handheld vacuum that I've ever seen. It is this one, the new H12 Pro wet and dry vacuum by our sponsor DreamyTech. It not only cleans your home, but also itself with its hot air drying mode to stop mold and smell buildup by manually engaging in self-cleaning that keeps your H12 Pro extra pristine for the next use. Which is super useful because it has two-in-one wet and dry cleaning using a motor that wipes the floor 520 times a minute, eliminating dirt, sucking up spills and grime without you barely even lifting a finger. 
Aided by its powerful forward traction generated by its motor, you won't even break a sweat when cleaning up your pet's hairs. And it also has dual edge cleaning, which extends the brush on each end uh, to clean up corners and walls, as well as skirtings and more. Get yours today by clicking the link below. And now, back to the video, let's discuss that iPhone SE 4 price increase. Currently, the SE 3 sells for $430, which in my opinion is already way too expensive. The SE 4 would sell for at least $500. I would put my money on a $549 price point, to be honest, but for the sake of best case scenario, let's assume $500. So for $500, would it be able to compete uh, with the competition? Well, if you look at the Android side, we have the Pixel 6a, which currently sells for $450. And that actually comes with a better camera, as the image processing is just incredible on Pixels. The performance, the design, and the build quality is better, or will be better on the SE4 in this case, which, you know, would have an iPhone 14-like design. So, in this case, I would say that yes, the SE4 would be able to compete today with the Pixel 6a. But then if you take a look at the Nothing Phone 1, which cost $300 and recently launched in the US, that does have a worse camera, but a 90 hertz display. Display. And the design, I would say it's remarkable for its price. So for most people, I would say the Nothing Phone is actually a better choice, especially when you consider the significant price difference. Not only that, but there's a lot of options from Xiaomi, Poco, Redmi at very low prices, like $200, and those phones have super fast charging, a high refresh rate display, and no notch. So uh, yes, the SE4 would have better performance for everyday use, uh, but when I was using, for example, the Nothing Phone 1, it was already crazy fluid. So I just don't see the SE4 for being able to compete against the Android market, even if it launched today. But remember that the SE4 is set to launch in March 2024 at the earliest. And by then we would have the Pixel 7a, the Nothing Phone 2, and even more great deals from the Chinese competition. However, this is Apple. They don't have to compete. All they need to do is offer a good deal to iPhone users, which in this case, I think $500 or $550 for an SE4, which is essentially an iPhone 14, I think that would be a pretty good deal. Right now, Apple still sells the iPhone 12, which is their cheapest non-SE iPhone for $600. Offering the iPhone 14 with an Apple A17 chip for 500 to 550 would be a really good deal compared to what they're offering now. But would it be too good of a deal though? Remember, Samsung had the Galaxy S20 FE and the Galaxy S21 FE. That was Samsung's idea of an iPhone SE and it actually took a bit of a different approach. Unlike Apple, which took a three to five year old design and then put their latest chips inside, Samsung also put their latest chips inside but used a more modern design. One that was actually made from scratch specifically for the SE line. And yes, it did have some downgrades compared to the normal models, such as a plastic back, a low resolution telephoto module, but most of the other things were the same. It also came with a 120Hz display, the same main and ultrawide cameras as the standard S21, the same fast charging. In fact, it even came with a larger display and an even larger battery, and all of that for a lower price. And you can probably guess what happened. It simply cannibalized the sales of the regular models, to the point where Samsung ended up discontinuing the FE line entirely. This is what Apple's currently struggling with. They need to make sure that this simply doesn't happen. Even though an ideal SE would be a more modern design, maybe even one designed from scratch to be an SE, but with a slightly older processor like most of the competition is doing, uh, they likely won't be doing that. And that's because Apple's older chips are already very powerful, so it would make no sense for anyone to, you know, get a non-SE iPhone in that case. Also, you can already get basically the exact same thing if you just go for a used iPhone, such as 13 or 12, uh, which you can find for a really good price. So logically, the best approach is still an old design with a new chip to differentiate the lineup more. The problem is that even that rumored iPhone 14 design I don't think that would be old enough. If Apple released the iPhone SE 4 this September for $500, alongside the iPhone 15, the only reasons to go for the iPhone 15, which would likely sell for $800, would be the dynamic island, the rounded frame, and the slightly better camera. Yeah, that would be it. So most people would simply just go for the SE 4 in that case. So I do think that it needs to have an even older design, something like the iPhone XR. In fact, uh, what's really interesting about this phone is that this was Apple's last phone, aside from the SE, to come with a single camera module. And camera was another major differentiator between the SE line and the normal iPhone line. The SE had one camera module, it had iPhone 8 optics, it had no night mode. So yeah, this was a major downgrade compared to the normal iPhones. But if it already comes with a dual camera module and night mode, then the difference in camera quality would be very minimal between something like an SE4 and an iPhone 15. An iPhone XR design could still keep that logic. 
But from the looks of it, the SE4 would simply just be an iPhone 14 for 500 or $550. So would you guys consider getting that in 2024 or would you simply just look at the used market instead? Well, if you do care about the used market, there are some great deals on previous iPhones if you tap on the YouTube shoppable cards down below. I'm Daniel, this is Zenoftech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenoftech, signing out. Cheers.